Dan Perry here with another CNC++ tutorial for Dan on Tech. In this tutorial we're going to look at another way of entering strings. We've looked at the CN statement with both strings and integers and other variables and we saw with strings if there are any spaces when you enter the string that it only gets that first part because it sees that space as a delimiter. So what we're going to do now is we're going to replace the cn command with a function that's part of the string command. So we use that string uh, include for those that string library uh, last time and added it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to replace the cn command with another command and that command is the get line command. And so the syntax is get line and then you have your input device or input stream. In our case, it's the CN or standard console input stream. And then the variable, and we stuck with S for string just as last time. So now when we run the get line function, or rather run this program, and it executes the get line function, it should allow us to put a string that has spaces commas and other things in as our delimiter or without treating them as delimiters. <clears throat> so if I type this is a long string and when I enter notice it now outputs the variable s is this is a long string. So we were able to get the whole string and when we use just the CN, if we put a comma, a space, anything like that, it treated it as a delimiter and said, well, that's the end of this variable input. Now we need the next one. Now there are a couple of problems we can run into with the uh, string variable. Before we get look at the problems, let's go in uh, for ease, I'm just going to duplicate these three lines. And now I'll just say another string. And I'll use the same variable, the S variable, um, because we're not going to do anything after we display it. So it'll be the same string. Let me go ahead and scroll that up on the screen a little bit. And now let's run it. And when we do, it should ask for a string, we'll enter it. It'll ask for another string, and we'll enter it. And it entered the first one. Uh, let me move that over here so it's better on the screen, maybe. And here, and I type another string, and it does the next string. And it did that with no problem. But there is a problem you can run into, <clears throat> and that problem is if we're mixing CNs and string variables. Uh, so if I had a variable, let's make it an integer, and let's make it an I. And somewhere, and it could be before any of the CI uh, or the get lines, but in my case, I'm going to just after the we handled the first string, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ask for an integer. And then I'm going to use a CN and I'm going to have it input that integer. Now, watch what happens when we run this. It goes through and it asks us for the first string as we said, or as we expected. It's displaying it because we told it to display it. We didn't have to display it here. Now it asks for an integer and I'll put an integer in. And notice it says enter another string, that prompt. And then it's got that C out where it says S equals, but it didn't pause and let me put that string in. That's a problem we can run into in mixing the two. So what we have to do when that, uh, whenever we're using a combination of get lines and CNs is after the CN before the next get line, 
And for my purposes, what I just do is I, I just put it right after the CN so I remember it, is I need to use a function that will clear the buffer. And there are a couple of different ways of doing it. <clears throat> and um, with, uh, with Microsoft Visual Studio, we need to use a, an ignore function that will tell it to ignore the rest of the buffer. Now, that function is the cn.ignore function, cn.ignore. And when you do that, you have to, in the parentheses, supply two parameters. Uh, the first parameter is the number of characters or maximum number of characters to ignore. And although I know I'm probably not going to have more than a few characters, I just out of habit put a thousand and I know I will never have typed more than a thousand characters that I need to ignore. And then the second parameter is what I'm using as the termination string. So in my case, it's always going to be the new line. Now, if you were going to end a string or end, end an entry with a comma or something like that, you could put that. But I've told it basically with this C and ignore, I've said... If there's it, whatever's in the buffer up to a thousand characters, if there's less, that's fine. Ignore those and consider the end of that buffer being the new line function. So when I run this now, it again asks me to enter the string. I'll just enter OK here. Now this time it asks again for the integer. I'll put an integer in. And now it does pause and say, enter another string. And I'll type a string in, and it, again, displays it. So what has happened here when I run this is <clears throat> it's gone in, and we've got our first string. So And then we output our first string. We're only outputting it there because that was easy. We didn't have to output it. We could have done whatever processing or stored it for later use. Then we asked for the enter an integer. So we're at that enter an integer line. And then we've got the CN. So I typed the 2 at the CN. Before, when I hit enter, it popped down and it output that value for the two, or actually I don't even have it outputting, uh, doing anything with that value I entered that integer. But what it, it did was it went to the next get line. It asked me to enter another string, but when I typed a value in, it thought there was something else in the buffer. So this CN ignore line says, basically clear out that buffer. Now, if you're using something other than Microsoft Visual Studio, uh, the Microsoft platform, if you're running a Linux platform, uh, BSD, you would probably use the uh, cn.flush command instead of the ignore. And that's a difference there. But whenever I'm using get lines and cns in combination, after the cn, I want to do the cn ignore to make sure I've cleared that buffer so I don't get any results that I'm not expecting. This has been another CC++ tutorial for Dan on Tech. Uh, please remember to subscribe to our C++ programming channel as well as our other channels.